Welcome to the Wellness Revolution Podcast, the radio show all about wellness in your mind, body, spirit, personal growth, sex, and relationships. Stay tuned for weekly interviews featuring guests that have achieved physical, mental, and spiritual health in their lives. If you'd like to have access to our entire back catalog, visit drveronica.com for instant access. And here is your host, Dr. Veronica. Dr. Veronica here. This is the Wellness Revolution, Dr. Veronica's Wellness Revolution. And I have here with me the beautiful Dr. Rami. And so she's with her nice, beautiful smile. You see that? I always... <laughs> strive to bring you wonderful people who can tell you something about your health. Now you may have a serious illness and you've been to everybody and we all got wonderful degrees on our walls, but guess what? We are all not the same. And one of the concerns in life today is that those of us who have education and training and higher levels of knowledge are getting usurped by people who are out there being personable. And so Dr. Rami and I have talked about this. We're gonna show you about what us highly educated doctors can do on air and what we do behind the scenes to get results in our clients, wonderful results in our clients. And so you can go on The Biggest Loser and follow people like Jillian. And Jillian is wonderful at what she does but she cannot tell you about the hormones and the neurotransmitters and what to do about the Barrett's esophagus and all sorts of colitis and why you're still fat. Maybe you didn't balance all those pieces that you need to balance. It's not about just diet and exercise. It's a little bit more. And so let me tell you about Dr. Rami. Dr. Rami, D-R-R-O-M-I-E. I want you to be able to find her on Twitter too. So Dr. Rami is a neurologist and blends both Western and Eastern philosophies. And she's been through a serious medical illness. We're going to talk about that. You think us doctors don't know what you've gone through. And yes, we do. Yes, we do. Because we've been shipped all around to the best people too. And then we try to manage our care and mess it up even more a little bit. But let's talk about what else. Neurologist with additional board certification in integrative medicine. So she has all the key points here. And we've seen her places like giving TED Talks on the Huffington Post, on Fox Business, all over the place. You know us media types, we are all over the place. But why we are all over the place is to give you good information. And good information so that when it comes time to select your practitioner, that you select somebody who really knows what they're doing. If you want to stay part of that sick care system under your insurance, it's a sick care system only. Do you know nothing that is not medically necessary will be covered under your sick care system? And do you know that prevention of disease and lifestyle factors that keep you alive aren't considered medically necessary? You need to invest in your health. And so I'm here to give you information with doctors like Dr. Rami so that you can make more informed, more informed decisions so that you can live a better, stronger life. And this is what we're doing. So Dr. Rami, welcome to the Wellness Revolution. Oh, Veronica, thank you. It is so wonderful to connect with you virtually. I have been following your work on Twitter. I'm always elated when I find another sister doctor that speaks my language. Thank you for having me on, and it's an honor to meet all of your viewers. Well, thank you so much. So let's just, I want to get a little bit of background of your story. So you're a not neurologist, but you've gone into integrative medicine. I'm an ophthalmologist, and I've gone into the functional wellness mm -hmm. area also, which includes all the... Yeah creative type approach. Yeah, they're one in the same, yeah. How did you get from neurology to integrative medicine? You know, I, Veronica, I'll tell you, I, I, you know, my background, my dad's originally from India, my mother originally from Pakistan. So I can say the concepts of Eastern medicine and spirituality were always passed on, especially by elders in the family. But what unfortunately happens when you start training in the Western medical system, a lot of that gets poo-pooed, especially the issues of taking spirituality away from science, some of the more natural ways of eating, et cetera. And, and so I kind of just put that in the back burner and really enjoy 
enjoyed my career for almost 15 years as a neurologist specializing in epilepsy. I was doing cutting edge research, looking at how women's hormones affect uh, women with epilepsy and migraines, et cetera. But the problem was with all those accolades, I got to be real. I did not know how to manage my own stress. You know, anybody, I'm, doctors are not alone, but I was working 100 hour work weeks trying to juggle patient care, research, teaching medical students, and no sleep because, you know, neurology is a high emergency uh, kind of prone specialty. So I was chronically sleep deprived. And my go to medicine was chocolate. <laughs> I am not lying. And, and I'm not talking just a little bit here and there. It's like, you know, the, the hormone imbalance, the sleep deprivation in four years, I went up four dress sizes. Wow. Okay. And I knew something was really wrong. But the worst part was aside from the weight gain and losing my personality and not like getting more anxious all the time. I was progressively having difficulty swallowing and it kept getting written off as, oh, you're type A personality, you're a neurologist, it's only heartburn, give up the chocolate. So now you're pissing me off because you're telling me to give up the chocolate and you're naming me a type A personality and nothing is helping me. Well, it turned out I have a rare disorder called achalasia and because I didn't know how to manage my stress and all the bad eating and the lack of sleep, it became so severe that it became life-threatening and I needed to have surgery. Um, and that changed everything because in those silent moments post-op, I realized, God, when I went back to the meditation and the yoga that I thought was just a hobby, I was emotionally feeling better and the chest pain I was having would go away. And originally I thought the whole thing was in my head. I thought, oh my goodness, like they didn't teach us this in medical school. Someone's going to think I'm crazy when I say, I can meditate to make my chest pain feel better. <laughs> and I, so I started to travel around the world and go back to the roots of, of who my people were and learn about yoga techniques all over the world, meditation, Ayurveda. And I realized like there is a solid amount of medical scientific evidence here in the West talking about how they help. And you know this, Veronica, as you know, doctor practicing functional medicine, but majority of our colleagues don't know this, and I don't fault them because we're not taught this in medical school or in our residency training. No, we are not. No, we are not. Yeah. So you learned, you, you went back to your roots, let's say, and found yeah. out that what was in your roots, Ayurvedic medicine, which includes the mind and the spirit. Mm was more helpful to you than Western medicine. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about this chocolate. Would you say that you were addicted to, to chocolate? You know, I, I say it now, and, and everybody who's heard me speak knows this, hashtag chocolate is medicine. So tweet Dr. Veronica and Dr. Romy when you're listening to this podcast if you believe chocolate is medicine. But yeah, you know, at that time I was addicted. And, and you and I both know that you know, the addiction center and the dopamine reward center gets, you know, lit up with the sugar and the chocolate. Now I have it in much more controlled measures, dark chocolate, but yeah, you know, I'm human. You put me on a red eye flight from a speaking engagement. I'm tired. I'll eat a little bit more than one ounce of dark chocolate. I'm still, I'm still admitting I'm human y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just wanted to ask that question because a lot of people don't understand that the food that they're reaching for yeah. a lot of times when they feel they can't control it and they say yes i can i can control it i can just stop is really an addiction centered where all the rest of the addictions are centered in the brain with neurochemistry going on and in order to get rid of the addiction the eating disorder the chocolate the cigarettes all that type of stuff the sex the gambling you have to balance your neurotransmitters in your brain. And a lot of times that can be balanced through two things. One is making eating changes. And the other is doing, there's three things, targeted supplements. The third is, yes, learning to manage your own stress. And you mindfulness. Yeah. Mindfulness is, is a great Ma mindfulness. Meditation, yoga is scientifically been proven. We can retrain the brain to be rewired away from our addiction, but it takes practice. And it really, I, I think it, it takes from deep within your spirit, a wanting and a knowing. So if somebody outside of you is saying you have a food addiction, a sugar addiction, a chocolate addiction, and you're trying to change it from a place of guilt and shame, 
shame or because you're forced to, then I, I really think the spirit is not going to align. Somewhere deep within you, you individually, when you come to terms with, this is not serving me. I want to change this habit. And you set that intention. Then absolutely, you know, there are the tools and functional and integrative medicine of, you know, balancing hormones and neurotransmitters and learning mindfulness-based techniques to do all these. And it is, and neuroscience research shows you can actually retrain your brain to crave healthy foods in less than six months. Yeah, I think it happens in less than six months. Yeah. I can say with my clients, it happens in two or three weeks. Excellent. Very, very yeah. Serious. You make yeah. a few changes, and then within two to three weeks, they say, this wasn't as hard as I thought. Exactly. And I actually like things I thought I would never like yeah. before. I agreed. In a few weeks. When agreed. you decide, I do want to change. So first, mm -hmm. you have to get to that point. Mm -hmm. and you have to admit also, that somebody might know a little bit more than you know. So tell me about that part of your journey, because you have to get to the point, you're a high-traveling high doctor. Yes. You trained in great places. You do the research. You're the one telling everybody else what's going on. How did you get to the place where you said, you know what, maybe that little monk sitting out there knows a little bit more than me. How did you get to that place? I, you know, Veronica, I think uh, when you get to where I am at, at my age or a point in life, everyone I meet has had that, what I call that sentinel event. It could be a health crisis just like I had a divorce, a loss of a job. You just kind of realize like I'm not living my life purpose. It's just something deep within you that changes. And, and it, it comes then with an external thing in life. And we turn to like, well, where's the answer? And I started with chocolate or buying shoes and realized like, I'm not happy. And the yoga and the meditation was almost an accident, a hobby on the side. And I really feel this is that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. One of Rumi's famous sayings. And, and, and it is yeah. so true. And so, you know, first understand that I'm not on this podcast dismissing neuroscience. I am grateful for the solid foundation in neurology, neuroscience, neuropsychology that I have. I really feel true health is bringing a balance of both. And that's what's missing in the Western medical system because we still at the Center of Natural and Integrative Medicine here in Orlando prescribe medication and run tests when we need to. Sure, the, we're, we're, you know, also helping people change a foundation of their hormones and their nutrition and, you know, all of those other things and promoting wellness. So remember one, there's always a balance. Now to go to your question of how did I realize, you know, that Monk had some wisdom, I, I think it was just, you know, I, I don't even want to call it accident. It was my time in life. I was at such a low point when I went into surgery and, you know, they had already had the discussion with me, like, God forbid, this is cancer. You may end up disabled. What are all these plans? You know, it, it, I got past this depression over my life could be over. I went into even a deeper place going, I'm not living my truth. Like, who am I? This is not me. I am not happy. I really hit that low spot. And it was sitting in meditation first in my own home and prayer that I realized like, I need to find my truth, my purpose, myself. And so really the initial yoga retreats and meditation retreats were to heal myself. And then I realized, well, gosh, if my chest pain and my anxiety symptoms are getting better and I'm rewired to feel happy now, I want to teach this to other people. Like it's my responsibility as a doctor, as a healer, just like, you know, you feel passionately about your functional medicine knowledge. And I, I think that's when I realize that there has to be a way to bring both together. And right now I'm a woman on a mission. I want people to have a happy brain so you can have a happy life. So and you know, about happy brain. I go around and I have several colleagues, we go around telling people how stress affects the body. So now here I am sitting with you, the brain scientist, and you talk about stress and its effects on the health. Give us a very good down to earth discussion on how stress is probably the number one piece that you need to be concerned about over what diet you're eating and what supplement you're taking. Amen. Thank you so much. You know, first of all, when I speak around the country to this issue, people think stress is about what's going on on the outside. 
right? Oh, I, I'm in a toxic marriage. I don't like my job. It's how we react to these things. And so if you introduce an external stressor, there's this area called the amygdala in your brain. I think of it as the airport traffic control center of your brain. It's modulating what you think, what you feel, your memories. And it's this relay path. And now imagine if you're stressed out, think of like one of the busiest airports, Atlanta, you know, Hartsfield, Jackson Airport. ATL. <laughs> what happens if their airport traffic control center shuts down? Mass chaos, right? Yes. That's exactly what's happening in the brain when you're under chronic stress. It's like all systems shut down and the bare minimum is running to keep your heart rate going, your blood pressure. But even then it's like pumping harder. So your heart rate goes up, your high blood pressure. And what that really means is the control for the rest of your body, every organ system is now whack. And so when you come to the doctor and you say, I'm having hot flashes, I'm too young to be going into menopause. I can't get rid of this belly fat. And I've been on every diet. In fact, I've been juicing for like six weeks and nothing has happened. Um, you know, a heartburn, uh, you know, tingling in the hands and feet, chronic headaches, depression. I mean, from the head to the toe, you know, it, we can list like 50 different symptoms that arise, you know, between hormones and your immune system and your mood and your gut and irritable bowel all when your stress response is off because, you know, there's this cascade of stress hormones that get released. And just think it's havoc. There's like a hurricane going on through your body and we need to get that inflammation under control. And that's why I am so passionate. And, and we'll get to this next to say that meditation is truly medicine for the mind. It absolutely is. And it's been well studied now. And we mm -hmm. can see people who can control their body functions. But here we are in America where we are the drive through nation and we would like everything quickly. So... <laughs> Explain this to me from a neurological standpoint. Help us understand ourselves a little bit more. Yeah. We see, why is it so hard from a brain perspective for us to grasp uh, something different? And so people come and they keep doing that Einstein insanity, the same thing over and over again. People will watch this podcast. They'll say, okay, I got it. And they'll go read a book and continue to fail. And they won't grasp that they really have to do something different and how we learn to do something different. Somebody's got to show it to us. We can't read it on, on University of Google. We can't watch it on Dr. YouTube. Yeah. Why is it so hard for our brain to grasp that? Here it is, Veronica. I use it as the theory of the, I should be meditating. I wish I could meditate. I would meditate if I have the time. Anytime our mind is saying should, would, could, it's more ego driven, you know, from a mindfulness point of view, you feel like you have to do something because somebody told you or meditation is trendy now, or I really dig Dr. Veronica and Dr. Romy, so I'm going to give it a try. I really want you to quiet down and, and talk to your spirit. And if there's something deep within you that knows there's something deeper going on that's causing my hormones to be out of balance. I know there's something deeper going on and why I can't lose weight or why I'm depressed. Even if I'm on, on uh, medications, I can't sleep at night. If there's something in you knowing you want to change, then I'm here to introduce a path. And here's the thing about mindfulness. I have no attachment to outcome. You know, I, I give you this knowledge and so does Dr. Veronica with love. But if it's not your time to come to a path of meditation right now, I have no judgment. We're just here planting the seed. And at some point, my intention is, is that you will give meditation a try. And this is why when we don't have our mind which is think of our mental, emotional processing, our body and our spirit in alignment, and we go off balance, that's how disease happens. Or, or, or that larger thing. What is the number one most Googled phrase? How do I find my life purpose? <laughs> I didn't know right? that. Yeah, yeah, that is. And, and that's like your, your spirit is off because you think you're doing what society expects you to, right? Society expected me to become a doctor. I have parents, Romila, we have one daughter and you will become a doctor, right? <laughs> And then I thought, oh, okay, to be happy, I need to buy some more designer shoes because in those days, the girls in Sex in the City were all the rage. And, and, and that was, I was doing what was expected of me, not what my spirit really wanted. 
And I promise you sitting down in meditation, this is where all this came from for me. And, and you can find that health in your in mentation, in your body. My, my food sugar cravings have subsided. Uh, I know I'm not taking good care of myself when my chocolate cravings, you know, start going out of whack. I know my body now. And, and, I, and I, I give myself compassion. I'm human still. It'll happen, right? So let's talk about meditation versus prayer and mm, yeah. um, practices like meditation and yoga versus religion. And I'm going to tell you what my understanding is, and then I want you to add into that. Absolutely, yeah. And so I'm, I'm, from, I'm, I'm from a Black American Black background, and we are churchy and religious, and we have a blessed day. Yes. When we go to church... Do you want to tell me how they're trying to kill you and send you to heaven with the food that they feed you after church and (laughs) all the toxic things that are going on there? All right. And so people say, why don't you go to the church anymore? Because I like to live a little bit longer. But okay, that's going off. And some people will be like, click, we're getting rid of Dr. Veronica for saying it. Well, no, let's not. You know, I think every culture has this, Veronica. The Indian culture is no different, right? If we're having five people over for dinner, we cook enough food and a lot of it's fattening, you know, for 20. And, 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 you know, so I think there's cultures all over the world where food is used to celebrate any emotion, good day, bad day, that. That, that is, but to go back to your original question about how religion is different, I, I always say this is, um, you know, first of all, I'm a big advocate, if it feels right for you, to attend your spiritual service and community. Research yes. studies show Americans are happier if they are part of any type of religious spiritual community and attend services regularly. Yes. And, and if you look at that study that came out of, um, you know, uh, University of Texas in Austin, that, you know, it didn't matter what religion you were, it was whatever spoke to you. So one it is- It doesn't I, matter what religion it is as yeah. long as it speaks to you. I just want to- yeah. You know, and, and it is. And from the path that I the answer, and I want to yeah. say that there's yeah. a lot of paths out there. Yeah. There's, there's so many paths out there because there's so many people on the earth. So but well said. And you know, for me is as, as a spiritual teacher and healer is that there are many paths to one destination. And that destination is uh, one, the, the creator, God, some people, Jesus, Buddha, uh, it, you know, spirit, however people see that. And it, it is all one. So the prayer is offering uh, thanks to God, talking to God, praising God, asking God for help for yourself, for others. Meditation is sitting in quiet time and hearing what God or the universe has to say back to you. Yes. That is the difference. I feel that in the American culture, we're good at begging God for what we want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Begging God for what we want. That's what we do usually because we got to get in there. Thank yeah. they, they God. But as far yeah. as yeah. just sitting and listening and mm-hmm. observing even what's going around when you're not sitting in prayer, that God uses the universe, the creator of all that is, uses to give you signals. I think we're totally awful at picking up those signals, um, either sitting quietly and listening or just noticing that, hey, you know what? I just happened to click on this podcast and Dr. Rami said something that resonates with me. So well, I- it is. Yeah, thank you. You know, I think we think we're awful at it and I'm a bad meditator because we're so judgmental in the society. Either you're a good person, a bad person, you, you get an A, you get an F. There is no such thing as passing or failing meditation. Meditation is just sitting and being with what happens, number one. So there's no right or wrong way to meditate. Just sit and be present. Here's the other thing is people think, oh, I'm not a medical intuitive like Dr. Romy. I can't figure this out or that's all spiritual woo-woo stuff. No, it's not that. You know what I often tell my corporate clients and everyone can relate that, that when you meditate and spirit is speaking to you, that's your gut instinct or your intuition. You know, think of all the parents that are listening, something in your gut instincts has told you your child is in danger. Or I think of my corporate clients that say, say, you know, I was interviewing a candidate, their resume was perfect, but just something inside of me said they're not going to be a right fit for the company. And that's when we're silent and listening to intuition. Then when all the yeah, buts, and we start rationalizing coming in, that's the monkey mind coming back in and fear, you know, so go 
or with the gut instinct. And as you sit and quiet in meditation, everybody has this ability to connect to spirit, to intuition. It's what I teach my clients to do, and it's how they get to a path of health. Because to go back to what you were saying earlier on this podcast, the addictions, the, the eating, the shopping, the gambling, the, the losing time on social media, that's mind-numbing activity that we're doing. Mindful activity is like, I'm going to stop yes. and be present and listen to what Dr. Veronica and Dr. Romy are saying. And I'm going to feel into my body and just allow what needs to come to me in this moment to come. It's that simple. And how do you do it? Just by consciously taking a breath. You want to do it together, Dr. Ronica? Well, wait, I have to ask you a question yeah. for because yeah. people say, yeah, this medication, meditation mess. I, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> there's no science behind it. And so oh. I'm going to talk about it now. That's why I had to put that out there because oh. there is science behind yeah. this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you make very good faces. Tell us about some of the science behind meditation that says, we as doctors should now be writing prescriptions to meditation, to yoga class, to Tai Chi, to something else that's out there that's outside of a pill. I agree. It was so well said. And oh, I'm on a mission to get mindfulness into meditation, just like you are uh, medicine. I'm sorry, Dr. Veronica. And you know, here is the truth. This literature date back to the 90s. 1940s to Harvard Medical School, where Dr. Walter Cannon discovered the stress response that I told you about earlier in the 1970s. Dr. Herbert Benson, also at Harvard Medical School, started to say, well, how do we shut off that airport traffic control tower, that stress response that's causing havoc in our body and our brain? It's through relaxation. And that, that's since the 1970s. We've had a wealth of literature showing that meditation, scientific data in medical journals um, around the world that are considered the most elite medical journals, you know, showing uh, meditation will lower blood pressure, calm down the heart rate, heal depression, heal anxiety, reduce frequency of migraine headaches, cure insomnia. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And, and so it, it's wealth is there and anybody can come to my website, drromi.com and I, you know, constantly updating it and showing it. So, you, you know, the literature is there. I just think, unfortunately, the healthcare system is like the Titanic, very slow to turn, even though they know the iceberg is right there. And it's going to take time to get all of this into the curriculum. But now integrative medicine is a board certification and 62 medical schools at this time have integrative um, medicine departments in their medical schools. So, you know, it, it's slowly coming about. And, and you, know, you know, number one killer for men and women in, in this country, you know what it is, Dr. Veronica, heart disease. And which means you're killing yourself. <laughs> we, we're killing ourselves. And the American Heart Association actually recommends meditation as one of the recommended therapies for controlling high blood pressure. Why is it so hard to get this word out there? Why? Why? What's the I'm not going to give up. I hold hope. And I think you, people like you and I having this discussion, like saying, hey, here are a couple women who dedicated their entire lives to studying, to being doctors and practicing medicine, talking about it. Uh, you know, I, I give accolades to kind of I, who I consider the visionary in this field, Dr. Deepak Chopra. He's been talking about this for, you know, over 30 years and all of his books. And, and now we see it's getting out there slowly. You know, the fact that I get called upon regularly to teach at Fortune 500 companies gives me hope that the word is getting out there, that using mindfulness-based techniques such as meditation help to, you know, calm us down, uh, promote health, you know, pr promote productivity, a healthy brain, a happy brain. I, I really feel that we're getting there. The fact that we can have this discussion today, and this discussion was not a part of the system when I was in residency training back in 1999, really speaks to it. So, you know, here we are, two women on a mission, and I know there's a lot more people that are listening today, and I will always continue to have hope that we can spread a positive message about health and wellness. Wow, wonderful. So I have to just share something that you will appreciate and my audience will appreciate because you talked about, okay, I'm not going to talk about medication because I'm, I'm a Western trained doctor and we've left that behind. 
Um, and so in my life and career now, my audience knows and some other people may know, the, the, the doctor community doesn't like it all, all that much, but I tell people, almost before I tell them a doctor, I'm a medical intuitive, I'm very clairvoyant. Yeah, and yeah. I can see in past lives and I can hook very well together yeah. what's going on, the stressors, the emotional and mm -hmm. spiritual with the, and it's not always in this life. So I have to share this with you just because yeah. I think you'll find this interesting. My yeah. name is Veronica, as you know, one of my past lives, Veronica, true image, on the road to Calvary, the true image, mm. woman who placed a veil on the, on the face of Jesus. Now, at the time, we don't know if the woman was named Veronica, and we don't know, she didn't know necessarily what was going on. And so Veronica is, wasn't necessarily the name of the woman. It meant she got this image, and that's the, where the name came from. Named after a Catholic saint, that's me. However, in one of my past lives, I was there, okay? And part of that past life was after I saw this man on the road, who I had no idea who he was, who says to me, after I wiped his face off, keep healing the people. Amen. I went Amen. out and founded a big clinic at that point in time. And it was all women who came and worked in this clinic and people came from far places to be able to get healings. And I know you were there at that clinic with me. Amen. Oh my God. I, um, I can, I, when I meet people, I can see something. <laughs> you know? well, Na namaste, sister. I, I mean, my, the, the spirit yeah. in me is just honors the spirit in you. And that's so beautiful. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. It's I giving me I wanted to share. I Thank mean, you, I was looking, Thank I was you like, for that gift. Thank you. I, Thank I you. know where I know her soul from. We, have <laughs> we, we are, yeah. let me just say something else. We call ourselves healers, but what we actually are is we are the witnesses to other people's healing. We bring forth our knowledge. And so we've yeah, gone we through do. digital medical yeah. training, but our souls have traveled in other healing professions, which is why at this point, we're bringing it all together. I needed to be an eye surgeon yeah. so I could have credibility today in America, graduate mm -hmm. with honors, this, that, and the other thing. You needed to be the neurologist, yeah. the practitioner, the this, that, and the other thing. But the side of you <laughs> that is resonating most now is the side to say you got to meditate the side that resonates with my audience is the side that says you got to connect the spiritual and the physical together and when i do readings for people so keep doing what you're doing amen to you too rami.com dr rami.com i honor you i am so happy you came and that you said yes <laughs> Honor to be here. This is fun. We could do this all day. So anytime, let's reconnect. I thank you for having me. We hope that we'll be able to work together in the same space physically at some point to help people. So thank you so much for being on Dr. Veronica's Wellness Revolution. It's been an honor, Dr. Veronica. Keep spreading your love out there, sister. Keep spreading the love. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Wellness Revolution podcast. If you want to hear more on how to bring wellness into your life, visit drveronica.com. See you all next week. Take care.